Hello, welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be demonstrating the block diagram of an FM stereo encoder. And I'm going to be explaining the basics of how it works, but in addition to that I'm going to be implementing one in DSP using the analog devices AD1701 DSP board. Um, let's take a look at the DSP board. So, here it is. It's pretty expensive here. This is the official one from Analog Devices that you can get on DigiKey. It looks like this. And it's programmed with software called Sigma Studio. Uh, Sigma Studio is a way to program DSPs without having to actually program an anything at all. Um, as a matter of fact, all of the design is done in a visual layout. There's no programming uh, necessary. It makes it easier for novices who don't know how to program to still be able to make a DSP. So, what we're going to be doing in this video is using this DSP to create an FM stereo encoder. So, you can also take a look here on AliExpress you have this thing it's basically a clone of the exact same thing and it's much cheaper so this might be something you would want to get instead because I mean really if you if you bought this and implemented the DSP yourself this is actually much cheaper than actually buying a professional DSP board um, so I, I mean a professional FM stereo encoder if you look online for FM stereo encoder boards, if you find something that's this cheap, likely it's going to be a very low grade one that uses an old style switching device uh, like a BA1404 or something like that um, instead of using an actual DSP. So to be able to create an FM stereo generator for this low of a cost and very high quality is pretty amazing so I'm gonna show you how to do that so you just buy this or you buy this I have this one but I also ordered this one I'm gonna try it out and see if it works the same way um, so I'm gonna open up down here I have this is Sigma Studio so this is where you program the DSP so what I have in here is an entire block diagram layout of the stereo encoder that you can see here so this is a basic diagram of what we're trying to do. And this is what I ended up having to do in the DSP to make it work. So there's several steps in the DSP that are not shown in here because of simplicity reasons. But uh, you can see there's some basic areas that are the same. So we've got a 38 kilohertz crystal oscillator. Uh, so here we're doing it a little bit differently we're generating 19 kilohertz and multiplying it over here to by itself we're multiplying it by itself to generate the 38 uh, and then we send the 19 unmultiplied down into this filter it's a 20 kilohertz low pass filter um, so we can check back here so they're they're taking the 38 going this way and then dividing the 38 and going this way to make the 19 but we're kinda doing the opposite of that because it's easier to do it this way in Sigma Studio so we're starting off with 19 multiplying it here and then the other branch is going here and being filtered at 20 and eventually being fed back into this addition block which adds all of these signals together so anyway let's start off at the beginning we're gonna start off over here so what we have over here is an input block. We have the left and right channel, channel 0 and channel 1. Then on either channel, we have a low pass filter set up to have some gain around 11.6 kilohertz. What this does is it creates the preemphasis. So I don't know exactly how to find out what the exact value should be for this but I messed around with it a little bit to get it as close as 75 
uh, to 75 microseconds as I could. So this section is the pre-emphasis block, which is not shown here. They just left that out for some reason. But you need the pre-emphasis, otherwise you're going to be sounding very, um, very low treble in the signal. So then we take that and we put them back together. So now we have the original signal with the pre-emphasis added to both channels. And then we take those left and right channels and we filter them both at around 16 kilohertz. You're meant to filter at about 15 kilohertz for FM. 15 kilohertz is the maximum audio frequency for FM. So you're meant to fi uh, filter 15, but I'm filtering 16 just to make it sound a little bit better. Um, then right here I have a notch filter. The notch filter is set to 19 kilohertz. That's so that later on over here uh, we can inject the 19 kilohertz and it won't interrupt or, or the audio won't interrupt it at all. So that's why we have this notch filter right here. Then we have still the left and the right channel coming out of the notch filter. Um, we have it being subtracted by itself. So we're or, or no. We're t subtracting the left and the right. So we have the left here, the right here, and then we're subtracting it in this block. Then right here, we block DC. So essentially, it's like a capacitor. You just think of it like a capacitor. We're blocking the DC right here. Then we're multiplying right here by the 38. So you can see the 19 is generated right here it's going out and being multiplied by itself right here to generate the 38 then that has a DC blocking capacitor right here and that feeds into this multiplication so it's subtracting the two channels right here and then essentially multiplying those two channels with 38 kilohertz then we basically have three outputs here we've got the original left and right on the top here that's what goes into this um, dial or slider that's what goes into the slider up here is the original left and right because we want to retain the original mono FM signal so that it's compatible with mono receivers so that's why we have this original left and right here being put into this addition block which adds everything together in the end. Then underneath this right here this is the 38 kilohertz stereo signal. That's what this is. And then down here is the 19 kilohertz signal. That's the pilot level. So basically what you do is you tweak and I got these exactly right. Uh, it took a little bit of time to get it right. Uh, if you don't get it right, you'll hear phasing between the left and the right channel. So you'll hear left, right, left, right um, in your ears when you're listening to it. But if you manage to get the levels here, these three levels exactly right, uh, then it'll work perfectly. So what I found is the baseband signal, which is this, uh, it needs to be around negative 12 dB. The stereo signal needs to be set to negative 4, and the pilot needs to be set to negative 40. So if you set those properly, you'll get the right ratios, and it'll generate a very high quality FM stereo signal. So then that finally gets added all together here, and it gets split and goes into these two outputs. The reason we have two outputs is simply because you know, audio jacks are almost always stereo audio jacks. They're very rarely mono. So we're basically just outputting the same thing on either left and right channel. Uh, the stereo signal that is multiplexed is contained within both the left and right channel. Just to make it more simple to hook up a transmitter if you want. So that is pretty much it for this video. Uh, I think I'll, uh, there's one more thing I didn't show. This is what the output looks like. So this is like a sort of spectrum analyzer type view of what this virtual circuit is actually generating. So it's generating this. So we have up here, see where it says 
main channel monural, that's this top slider right here. Then it has the pilot right here, the 19 kilohertz. That's the bottom slider right here. Then it has the 38 kilohertz. Um, it's a double sideband. It's these two blue things. That's um, the middle one. That's the actual stereo signal. So an SCA, that's just for radio data. It's not really necessary. And I'm not going to go into that. Um, so yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it, you now get a better idea of how a FM stereo generator works and also a very good way to make your own FM stereo generator for much cheaper than it would be buying one and also very high quality as well. So there's not really any reason you wouldn't want to do this aside from the time that it takes to put this thing together here. But I might actually include a link to download this project file so that you can just load it into your DSP and experiment with it and see if it will generate a stereo signal as it should. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching everyone, and I hope to see you in the next video. The next video is probably going to be on a AM uh, broadcast processor uh, using this same chip, and that is the ADAU1701. So thanks for watching.